central New Mexico. October 19th, 2019. Investigative journalist Linda Moulton Howe has invited ancient astronaut theorist Giorgio Tsoukalos to join her on a trip to a spot in the desert just outside Roswell, very near what is known as the Skip Site. According to eyewitnesses, one of the three UFOs seen in the sky in July 1947 first crashed to Earth near this location, then was propelled back into the air, skipping like a stone in a pond before finally coming to rest. Linda was contacted by geologist Frank Kimbler, who wants to show her mysterious metal fragments that he found here and search the area for more. Linda, this is so exciting. I have not been here in a couple of years, so I'm really looking forward to meeting Frank. Yeah, well, I'm glad that we've got a geologist who's helping because the geologist looks at land and says, if there is debris, there's going to be some kind of a drift with the land. And just from what I know, he has studied some areas meticulously. Right. Giorgio and Linda arrive at the skip site and meet Frank Kimbler, a local geologist and professor of earth science. How, How are, are you? you? Good How to see you? you. All right. Frank, Linda, is, finally. Yes. You and I have been chasing these artifacts. Chasing the metals. For <laughs> looking for so the, looking for parts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> professor Kimbler has spent nearly a decade searching areas beneath the purported trajectory of the Roswell craft with infrared technology and metal detectors. Since 2011, Professor Kimbler has uncovered more than a dozen metal fragments that he has subjected to scientific testing and found to be highly unique. That's what we want to go out there and see yeah, where you've been getting wait. this. Frank, yeah. what's inside the case? Oh, this, this is the magic right here. This is some of the material that I have found out here uh, using a metal detector. Um, interesting. This stuff is, is, is very interesting. It's all twisted and mangled up. Something that you would expect to happen yeah. from a, uh, a, a crash is to have metal that's, that's compact and twisted. When Professor Kimbler laid out his box of his pieces of metal, the first thing that struck me is these were tiny, tiny, tiny fragments. Could they possibly be from wreckage? These pieces are small. Uh, which is things that the government would have missed. Uh, they wouldn't have been able yeah. to find it. And here's my magic. Let's get a comparison here. Oh, look this, at that. Look at that. Look at it. It's oh, like a snow field. After all these years, the, all of the pieces, they look absolutely pristine. That's the magnesium zinc side. This has got layers to it. That's amazing. It's. But I bet you've never seen anything like no. this. No. Being an earth scientist, being a geologist, I've seen lots of all kinds of materials that are out there. I have never, ever seen anything like this. This fragment that Linda is showing me, it, that stuff is absolutely amazing. Well, I've never seen anything like it before in my life. And what's interesting about it is that it has some layers, some banding on it. And that banding is very similar to some of the banding that I found in photomicrographs of the material that I have from out here. I think, as that Giorgio is, is holding this, He's holding something made by another intelligence from someplace we don't understand, and this is truly extraterrestrial. Is it possible that Giorgio is holding an actual fragment of an extraterrestrial craft? And if so, could even more incredible artifacts still remain in the desert outside Roswell? Right now, we are roughly about maybe two, two and a half miles from where the object skipped down. This is actually the disturbed area right here, which is right where we're going. And it's right where the eyewitness accounts basically says that the craft left a furrow. So you can tell that something went on. It even looks like there's a little gouge mark that was left by the craft as it came in. The disturbed area that Professor Kimbler identified has become known as the gouge. In 2002, an archaeological dig was conducted in this area by the University of New Mexico, Albuquerque, to search for topographical evidence of a UFO crash. 
they found a V-shaped gouge that seemed to indicate that something came down and skated across the ground. Like a typical aircraft crashing into the ground, leaving a, a big furrow there. Author Donald Schmidt, an advisor to the International UFO Museum and Research Center Board of Directors, took part in the excavation. We flagged that area, did electromagnetic sensory testing of the site to sift through possible samples from the crash, all in an attempt to find a piece of that missing evidence that would demonstrate once and for all that this was something extraordinary. The dig collected countless soil samples from in and around the gouge. But curiously, access to this wealth of potential evidence has been restricted by the Bureau of Land Management ever since. There's 600 pounds of stuff stored in a vault in the Maxwell Museum at the University of New Mexico that nobody has looked at, and it needs to be looked at. We need to get going, and we need to get out there so you guys can experience finding some of this stuff, which is amazing. All right, let's go explore. So where do you think's best here now? We're in the perfect spot, and we're gonna cover this whole thing right here. Uncovering bits of debris in this vast desert is a daunting task. But after nearly a decade spent combing the entire area, Professor Kimbler has pinpointed certain hotspots. Some of the artifacts he brought with him today were discovered in this very location just within the past month. So just above the area of the ground, we're gonna sweep back and forth like this. And we're gonna cover this side to side, back and forth, little by little. I've been out here six or seven or eight hours at a whack swinging this thing till my arms break off. We can uh, cut across this way. You're waiting for that beach. We're looking off in, in this general direction out here. The craft basically either had some kind of mechanical failure or something blew up. Professor Kembler scans the area along the gouge, meticulously covering every inch. After nearly two hours, he has not detected any metal objects. Giorgio, my arm is about to break off, and I'm kind of hoping that you just might have a little bit better luck than sure. me doing Let's this. See. You saw what I was doing. It's yep. already fired up, and okay. I'm going to let you swing this, and we see can just walk. Working. There Great. you go. It's perfect. working perfect. Excellent. Maybe you'll be able to, to get the magic flowing mm -hmm. on this. Well, I think we need to head up right over here because this is right at the base of a hill and there's a bunch of disturbed rocks. Might be a good place to, uh, to capture okay. material that has run off. Also, oh. Within just a few minutes of taking over the metal detecting, Giorgio gets a hit. I heard something. Yeah. There is something. Oh, my God. There is something there and we need to dig it up. Let me help you find it. OK. It's right here somewhere. We'll it's find right. it. We will find it. You're on top of it. You're right there. Right there. See if it's there. It's in my hand. Wow. Now comes the hard part. It's a, a piece oh, of wire. All right. OK. A tiny little, little piece wire. of wire. We're going to keep it. We're, we're going to take it and have it analyzed, because maybe it's got something in it that's weird. Let's still investigate this. We need to take it and have, and have it tested. Giorgio hands off the metal detector to Linda, who continues along the gouge. Just a few feet from where Giorgio detected a piece of wire, oh. they get another hit. All right. Pick up your uh, your bracelet too. I tell you what. Let's um, dump dump it into this hand, right here. There we go. It's another piece of wire. This is strange looking though. Why is it so twisted and mangled? I have no idea. You said that if there was debris, this would be one of the places because of the geographic. Uh, terrain it's, right it's here. It's runoff, and this is what I've used time and time again to find stuff. As far as Giorgio and Linda are concerned, any metal objects found in the so-called gouge area are worth examining. Is it possible that these bits of wire represent debris from the 1947 crash that was overlooked by the military? The Roswell incident remains the most well-known UFO event in history. But there have been reports of numerous other UFO crashes all over the world. 
as well as the recovery of strange metal debris. In 1991, geologists searching for gold deposits in Russia's Ural Mountains made a highly unexpected discovery. At depths of over 30 feet, they found a scattering of tiny metal coils and springs. Russian scientists are finding these tiny nanoparticles. They found thousands of these things. They have to look at them through microscopes. They're, they're, some of them are just one ten thousandth of an inch you know, in size. They're all kinds of spirals and tiny machined bits. When they look at it, they seem to be exactly like the kind of tiny nanoparticles and machine bits that we are creating today. What you see under the electron microscope is mind-boggling because you see spirals, you see definitely something where the scientists who investigated this came to the conclusion that these items are artificially made out of tungsten and molybdenum. And so that right there is incredibly interesting because that was found exactly at the skip site. Molybdenum is the same material detected in the metal fragments that Frank Kimbler found in the desert outside Roswell. It is a super strong element commonly used in NASA spacecraft. These microscopic spirals were made of wolfram and molybdenum. The melting temperature for wolfram is above 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit and for molybdenum is uh, about 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Some uh, version of NASA from some other star system could send a probe here to Earth and it could fail uh, and crash into Earth and, and we would look at it and think, wow, where did this come from? Maybe one day we might be creating our own Roswell when we send our first probe to the near star. Ancient astronaut theorists point out that dozens of visitors to the Ural Mountains have reported encounters with strange cigar-shaped craft trailing fire across the sky. Could this be the Russian Roswell? Indeed, people living in the Ural Mountains maybe more often than uh, people living in other parts of Russia witness some strange phenomena in the air and on the ground. Ural Mountains are a very interesting space in the paranormal history of Russia. And I've studied a lot because there have always been incredible UFO sightings in the Ural Mountains. There are stories of civilizations that have disappeared or went under the ground, uh, the so-called uh, dwarf people in the Ural Mountains. If the nanoparticles discovered in the Ural Mountains are debris from a crashed alien craft, they bring up another intriguing possibility. Because based on how deep below the Earth they were found, they could have been deposited there thousands of years ago. They're thinking that these things must be over 50,000 years old. So is this also a debris field from a crashed extraterrestrial craft in the Ural Mountains? There could be crash sites all over the world that are hundreds of thousands of years old, right up to modern times. Rumors abound that there are facilities located all over the world holding the remnants of crashed extraterrestrial craft, like in the remote hills of China at Pine Gap in Australia and Rudlow Manor in England. Who knows if over the chronology of the history of planet Earth, there were more craft, just like at Roswell, that crashed. Rendlesham Forest, Suffolk County, England. 200 miles east of Rudlow Manor, lie six square miles of woodlands that has become notorious as the site of Great Britain's most incredible UFO encounter. On December 26, 1980, near an airbase leased to the United States Air Force by the RAF, strange lights are reported on the horizon in what appears to be a possible downed aircraft. Two US servicemen are dispatched to the site 
According to accounts, radios failed as they approached the targeted area, and the air itself felt electrically charged as they closed in. Strange lights were seen about three to 400 meters away from an area that was called the East Gate. And the patrolling officers at the East Gate saw the lights above the forest, and they thought potentially it was a downed aircraft or an aircraft in distress. So two of them, Sergeant Pennison and Airman John Burroughs, went further into the forest. Once at the so-called crash site, the men observed a strange triangular craft on the ground approximately three meters wide at its base. It appeared to be either hovering or on legs. And it had clearly come down into this small clearing and smashed some of the branches off the trees. So there was, there was physical evidence which was looked at afterwards. And so the men looked at this strange object. I noticed that there was an inscription on the side of the uh, aircraft. I was expecting to find, uh, I don't know, USAF, uh, something like that. And what I find is glyphs, uh, pictorial glyphs, making no sense at all. And then I was running my hand over the side of the craft. It was very warm to touch. At this time, we were getting a feeling of electricity that was just bouncing. It was much, much stronger. There was this feeling of being drawn into it or being pulled into it. Like someone was holding a picture of, of zeros and ones in my mind's eye. The strange vision Sergeant Penniston had upon touching the craft has made this one of Britain's most famous UFO encounters. But ancient astronaut theorists suggest that even more compelling is what happened after. The following evening, further strange sightings occurred and also the night after, reported by U.S. Air Force Colonel Charles Halt. Colonel Halt led his own search party to put an end to the confusion. But instead of finding a logical explanation, they discovered high levels of radioactivity where Burroughs and Penniston had previously seen the strange craft and three impact holes in the ground. They then spotted a light in a nearby field that suddenly came towards them through the trees at high speed. One of the people with me said, look there to the north. There were four or five objects in the sky. They were elliptical and round. They changed shape. They moved at very high speed, made sharp angular turns, as though they were doing some type of a grid search. One came at high speed, stopped directly overhead, three, four, maybe 5,000 feet, and sent down a concentrated beam about eight to 10 feet from us. It was about a foot in diameter. I would describe it today as probably like a laser beam. We noticed the other object to the south sent down similar beams on Woodbridge Base. Apparently, these beams were falling down into or near the weapons storage area. I was really concerned then. 